Buckle up, bitches. Let's go. We're going to be jumping through a lot of examples of where my strength is right now. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Vitroon Physique. Thank you for stopping by for Ascension episode two. So right off the bat, before we get started, if any of you are wondering like, hey, you know, what the hell, aren't you gonna cover that kind of cliffhanger you had in Ascension episode one? The answer is yes, except I'm gonna do that a little bit later in the video. In fact, here are some timestamps for this video. Buckle up, bitches, let's go. So what you guys are seeing right now, this is my current training programming. I'm following the Hybrid 5 athletic version. It's kind of like a more streamlined, uh, less intense version of Hybrid 5. Right now, because I am kind of incorporating more calisthenics, more sprinting, more athletic functional style training, and I'm only eating at a calorie maintenance, I couldn't do the standard version. It's just, it would be simply too much. So the way I do it right now is every cycle, which is two weeks, is going to be composed of a moderate intensity week where you're gonna be doing stuff like sets of eight. Uh, the big heavy compound lift on each day in that round is it going to be an eight plus am rep. That means you get as many reps as possible. You better at least get eight reps and then you try to go for obviously more. In my case, I'm always going for around 11, 12, 13. And then the second round, the second week, it's the same thing except now it's four plus. And because the minimum is a lot lower, the weights are going to be a lot higher. So it's kind of more moderate intensity and then high intensity and I kind of alternate between those two. So what you guys are seeing right now, this is my inclined bench press. This was an eight plus AMRAP and this was on the slightly lighter day, the more moderate intensity day. I got 12 reps and as you guys can tell, the form is pretty good. Um, the full, you know, full range of motion, bar touching the chest, full extension of the arms, uh, especially when it's kind of more lighter, I don't want to say light, more like moderate intensity, moderate weight stuff. Yeah, there's really no excuse for you to kind of like start buckling and uh, breaking down on form because you're not even fucking heavy yet. If you're lifting like 70% of what you're capable of in terms of 70% of your estimated one rep max, you should have pretty good form because if you're breaking apart now, what the fuck are you gonna do when you're lifting like 85, 90, 95% of your estimated one rep max for like two, three, four reps? Like when you actually get into the heavy shit. If you're breaking down now, you are screwed then and that's how you get an injury. So especially in these more moderate, lighter sets, again, light sets, uh, 215 for 12 reps is still relatively heavy, especially on the incline bench press. On the flat, I can do 225 for like freaking 15, 18, almost 20 reps. Like, you know, I could just bounce that stuff off all day. But on the, on the incline bench press, that is definitely much more of a challenge. I've always noticed that if you want to give it a percentage, I'd probably say that your upper pecs and your incline bench is usually like 75 to 80 percent of what you are capable of on the flat then jumping into the heavy week this is probably the heaviest i have ever gone last year i believe in ascension 2017 or season two the heaviest i ever did was 225 pounds for a set of eight reps i may have done multiple sets of that but still in terms of raw poundage that's the heaviest i've ever gone this time around this footage is literally from yesterday this is pretty damn awesome this is 245 pounds for the same set of eight reps. So same number of reps, but 20 extra pounds. And especially on the incline bench press, for me, that shit was heavy, which is why you can probably see right now that that last rep, it was not pretty. Like my ass came off the bench a little bit. I started to do, uh, you know, to do that thing where you kind of like slide down in your seat, which is not good. Because essentially what you're doing is you're taking your incline bench press and you're turning it more into a flat bench press. Everybody always tries to cheat on this and it's just, it's just what our bodies naturally do. When you're doing an overhead press, we bend back, we turn the overhead press into an incline bench press. Obviously because your upper pecs are stronger than your deltoids. And then when you're doing the incline bench, it's even you take it even one step further. Instead of using your upper pecs, you start to use your overall pecs by kind of sliding down and turning it more into a flat bench press. That's not necessarily good, so... I'm still gonna count that. That's not like an official, you know, power lifting lift meet bench, like where there's like four judges watching you, you have to have your head on the mat, you have to have your ass on the mat, you can't do this, you can't do that. But for, for a gym PR, I'll take it, not bad. Moving on to my other lift, this one I'm even more proud of. When it comes to my deltoids, the dumbbell shoulder press is my current main lift. It's my current forte. I've kind of moved away from the overhead press simply because, like I said a minute ago, I kept on doing this bullshit, and you turn the overhead press. You turn your back into a question mark, which is not safe, 
And then you turn the overhead press more into an incline bench press, trying to activate your upper pectorals. And I found myself doing that so many times. And look, I can fix my form, but I need to focus 100% of me, all my energy, all my mental focus on getting this crazy weight up. 90 pounds, this is like my high school girlfriend in each hand. And trying to like lift that, that shit takes all my focus. So if I need to spend even 1% of my mental energy, my mental focus on something else, like maintain good form, don't bend your back, I don't wanna do that because fine, maybe I do it properly, but then I didn't get the, as much weight as I possibly could, or maybe didn't get as many reps. And I don't want that. Right now, these days, I'm doing a lot of am wraps. I need every last ounce of strength because if I'm off by even like one rep, I might not get uh, that calculated one rep max that I want. Every time I do one of these, these heavy four plus am wraps, I get a new calculated one rep max, then I stick it into my progress tracker, and my goal is to see that consistently going up. And if I'm off by even one rep, it's kind of like the progress tracker kind of gets a dip. And then there's nothing wrong with that, but personally, I'm like, fuck, I want to keep it going. If it's even, even if it's like one, two, three pounds increase cycle to cycle, I want that. I want that constant, small, but consistent um, progression. So I switched to the dumbbell shoulder press just because you got that mat there. Um, you actually have the seat and it's stopping your back. So you can't really cheat on your form that much because there's nowhere to go. That one, the scene that the thing that you guys just saw, that was about like a week and a half ago recently. This is just a few days ago, 95 pounds on the dumbbell shoulder press. My program, it's like, it's the next iteration, the next, I think it's like cycle four or five or whatever I'm on right now. Um, it had me increasing by just a little bit. And that kind of like, it pushed the meter from 90 pounds over to 95 pounds as my uh, AMRAP, four plus AMRAP. And I got seven, which is pretty like in my personal case that is by far the heaviest i've ever gone i remember last year i even did a video about this and i was like oh my god guys i'm so proud this is the heaviest i've ever done i did 84 pounds for a set of eight reps so i'm sitting here editing this footage and i just realized like holy shit like i forgot the kind of lifts i did last year i pulled up this footage from 2017 as you guys are seeing on screen right now <laughs> It's really crazy how like, I'm like proud of the fact that I finally broken into 100 pounds estimated one rep max on the dumbbell shoulder press. And the scale on the left, it doesn't even go above 110. And now I'm sitting here doing numbers approaching like 118, 120 and beyond. And I'm just thinking, holy shit, like to go back in time and beat the shit out of your former self, that is, that, in my opinion, that is the true goal of bodybuilding. And the last thing I want to say with this little training commentary is, I am so fucking excited this year. And this is different from every other year of YouTube or Ascension or whatever I've done on this channel because oftentimes there's kind of like, there's two kinds of PRs you can do. If you bench 300 pounds, but you weigh 200 pounds, is that more or less impressive than you benching maybe 275, but maybe you weigh 180 because it's a little bit less weight, but you're also, your body weight's a little bit less. It's always kind of like you have to choose between one of those. But in my case, it's both. I'm lifting the most amount of weight I've ever lifted, and I'm doing this at a slightly less body weight because I cut down a little bit uh, in April and May. I just did it, like, I, I dropped like eight or 10 pounds a little bit. I was feeling very, like, kind of fat, to be honest. I was kind of feeling very fluffy. And when I get too heavy, I kind of start to feel lethargic and shitty. I actually feel a little bit better when I'm in that mid 180 area. Not like competition level when I'm 170 and I feel like I want to put a bullet in my head and I feel like shit. So the fact that right now my training is going so well, that's fucking awesome because I know that when the time comes, when I'm done this little temporary maintenance period, which is going to be right now, then a little bit into September, when like, when October hits and I jump right into a lean bulk, into the fall, winter, and into a little bit into early next spring before I start cutting down for my 2019 return to the stage, return to competition. This is going to be crazy because there's no recovery period. There's no like, oh my God, I'm like this emaciated 170 pound version of Igor stepping off stage. I'm shredded, but I'm weak and I'm tired and I feel like shit and I need to take one or two months just to get back to normal. No, there's none of that. I feel pretty damn good right now. When I return to eating a good amount of calories, like 3,000, right now I'm like 25, 2,600 around there, kind of at a maintenance level, give or take, depending on my activity level. When I return to eating good, holy shit. Also guys, last thing I wanna mention, the reason why I'm doing this, some of you guys may be wondering, Igor, why are you doing a maintenance period? We don't care if you're lean, you know, you're not cutting this year, you're not competing. Why are you trying to maintain a relatively low body fat percentage? I'm not shredded, but I'm kind of lean. There is a reason for that. I need to keep a relatively low body fat percentage for some promotional work, which I'll probably be doing in September around there, but 
what we'll be promoting, we'll talk about that at the end of the video at this timestamp. That is my whole Project X. That is what I alluded to with a cliffhanger in the previous video. And finally, I'm sorry, I've mentioned this like a hundred times, I'll finally be able to release and tell you guys as to what that is because this has been a big work in progress and I'll mention that in a few minutes. Hey guys, okay, so this, uh, I just want to give you guys an example meal. Hey, oh, she ran over so quickly. She was like, I see the chicken, I want it. She knows that when I'm making it, there's like a 10% chance I'll just accidentally drop stuff and she's just like, like, I'm ready, I'm ready. You ready? You ready? You ready? She's so fucking ready. Either way, I want to give you guys just that. Not a full day of eating or anything, but an example meal. As I am a vlogger again, I'm getting back into it. I'm a bit rusty, but I want to show you guys right now. First meal of the day, it's 4.47. I woke up today around like 9.30, 10-ish, so around like six, seven hours of fasting. We worked out about 30 minutes ago, so, you know, gotta get that anabolic window. Hey! Well, not exactly. I mean, that does exist, but it's it's definitely overblown, but that's a topic for another video. Either way, we got a big serving of chicken breast here. This is gonna be mostly for me, but I'm saving a little bit for Jordan as well. That is my protein source, high protein, low fat carbs, everything. I put a little bit of seasoning on that. Some kind of- Oh, you like my seasoning. Some fancy- I got some fancy seasoning. $1,400. Like $6. $6 for a seasoning? Okay. And also our carb slash vegetable source is really good. Oh, Ooh. We got broccoli, and then we also have, you see those little things? They kind of look like tater tots. They're actually cauliflower tots. So they're still a decent carb source because they are technically deep fried, but on the inside, instead of potato, it's cauliflower. So it looks almost, you know, I taste, everything is almost identical. So if you guys are out there and you're looking for something a little bit more low carb, but you definitely want to cheat on some kind of like, you know, some fried goodness, you're craving French fries, tater tots, all that stuff. This is a really good option. You can find this probably, I mean, if I can find it in Canada, you guys in the rest of the world, especially in the States, you definitely have this. And my dessert, I'm simply doing, this is just frozen cherries. What I've been doing a lot recently is I'm buying frozen fruits and vegetables, and I love to take it and let it defrost and thaw for like 15, 20 minutes, and it's really good. It really helps kind of like kick those cravings when you're craving something sweet, especially something cold, because it's like 40 degrees right now in Canada. It's really good, really easy, like what, like 20, 25 grams of carbohydrates, and from a natural source, you know, I'm trying to still maximize fruits and vegetables. Between the broccoli, this, and I'm like, do I count the cauliflower tater tots? Yeah, I mean, there's cauliflower in It's there. cauliflower in there. It's a, it's a salad, guys. Either way, that's three servings of fruits slash vegetables, which is pretty good. Fruits. It's been a year, guys. I'm getting back into it. Three servings of fruits slash vegetables. Not too high in calories. And the good thing about this is that later in the day, I can... You know, I can eat a lot more, I can pig out, and I actually need that. Today I'm kind of keeping that into consideration because we have a wedding on Saturday, and today's the rehearsal dinner, and I have no idea what I'm gonna be eating there. I've never been to a wedding or a rehearsal dinner or anything like that before, so I need to kind of like save up some additional calories just in case. It's, you know how people like save up for a rainy day financially? It's the same case, I'm saving up for a fat day. So last video we ended off on a cliffhanger. I know, I know, right? Like, ooh, Igor, cliffhanger, ugh, you Game of Thrones or something? <laughs> I wish. The reason I wanted to do that is because like, I kind of built up that entire video about like this thing that I have been working on for a long time, you know, my whole Project X or whatever you want to call it. I didn't want to just like stick it in and the, you know, at the end of the video and then that video would be like, hey, welcome to the Ascension episode one. It's 50 minutes long. <laughs> that joke is never getting old. But seriously, this project has pretty much been the reason why I had to take essentially a full year off uh, from vlogging. This has taken like 10, 12-ish months of work. And without a doubt, this has been the biggest, you may call it financial risk I've ever taken with my, myself, my channel, my business, everything, putting about $30,000 into this. So unfortunately, uh, commercial activities and So I wrote and published my first book. That's right guys, your boy Vishroom Physique is now an official YouTuber, professional, heavy things picker-upper, hashtag meme lord, and published author. All right, let me rewind things a little bit. So I think like right here, right now, where I'm sitting, about like a couple months ago, I put out a video. It was called like, should you bulk or cut first? This is probably the number one question I get asked the most, especially by more so beginner individuals, people who are kind of in their first one or two maybe uh, years of training. Essentially the main problem that I'm trying to fix here is you guys, my viewers, who are more so kind of beginners and would classify yourself as skinny fat. 
probably the most common, unfortunately, body type in the Western world today. Individuals who don't have that much muscle mass, you know, your biceps and your arms are like maybe 12 or 13 inches. You know, you can't bench press your body weight. You, you really don't have that much muscle mass, but you can't really start to bulk up because you've still got too much body fat. You know, you have nowhere near a six pack. You've probably got, you know, maybe a little bit of a, like a belly or, you know, you've got, you've got soft arms. You don't have any muscle tone. So you're kind of stuck, you know, between a rock and a hard place. You don't really know which way to go. And it's not as easy as just eat more food or eat less food. You can't do either of those approaches because you're not trying to just get bigger or just get smaller. You're trying to get smaller in the right areas and bigger in the right areas. So this got me thinking because with that video, I realized one of the problems is, although we talk so much about who you know qualifies for a body recomposition, who can actually do this based on their experience level, their age, their overall you know amount of body muscle, amount of body fat, that's all great and all, but I didn't actually explain how to go about this. I didn't actually explain how to eat, what to eat, how to train, all these other additional factors that actually influence your body composition. I didn't talk about, you know, how to do that. Now the problem is I can't really do just a video on this because it's just too much content. I would have to do 40 hour, you know, worth, worth of uh, lectures and just these crazy sit down videos. Whiteboard, I need like a white mile of just writing nonstop. And that's why I actually put this book together. Not just the book, there's actually like a full, I would rather call it like a course or a program because a book is kind of just like, oh, you know, you walk into your local Barnes and Noble, you read like a hundred pages or, you know, whatever, and you're done. This, is, you know, it gets a lot more advanced. It's kind of like in between a book and like a textbook or like a course or program. Fuck it. I don't want to like put a label on it or something. That's why I've been busting my ass on this guys for like the last like almost year. I mean, this has probably been the biggest thing I've ever put together. And I'll be honest, probably the reason behind that is it's just a lot more comprehensive. I mean, I think I spent like two months just compiling research. Like there's probably, if I remember correctly, according to the, the actual sources, I think there's 113 sources, many of them being from actual scientific articles. Because again, I don't like putting shit out and just saying, do this because it worked for me. No, that's bullshit. In, in the scientific community, that's laughable. We call that a sample size of uh, N equals one, which is bullshit. So yeah, guys, that's it. I don't want to spend this entire video on this only. I just want to sit down and let you know what I've been doing and why I did in a way have to step back a little bit from vlogs or just videos in general. Trust me, I know, I fucking hate it. In July, I put out one video. That's laughable. That's embarrassing and to be, like, it makes me physically ill. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but when you guys see this thing, when it's finally published and finalized in October, by the way, we need about eight weeks to actually like create it because this is actually the first and only copy right now. It's kind of like a physical proof that I get. This is the only version in the entire world. And then I submit it to my printer and we're ordering thousands of copies in. They have to cross the Atlantic Ocean, get over here. There's a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, guys, that's it. Just want to give you a bit of an update on what's been going on. And by bit of an update, this has probably been me rambling for 12 minutes. When it comes to this, I'm going to be showing you guys a bit more updates as it happens. We've got about two months worth of work left before we can officially launch this thing. Now comes other stuff, more so like the business behind the scenes, getting the actual physical copy, signing the contract, doing all those things, getting these thousands of books. So we're talking like two or three tons, storing it, and uh, doing all this stuff, it's, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of exciting. Some of my favorite channels, my favorite fitness vlogs, have always been like those old school, like the, the old school Christian Guzman style vlogs, back when he was in like 2013, 2014, back when he was grinding and starting his business up from scratch, back when he was like sending out 10, 12 shirts, you know, before it became this crazy, massive, extremely successful thing that it is today. But seeing that beginning, like seeing like as you plant the seeds and start the small business and seeing it grow, that was always, in my opinion, the most exciting thing. So I want to kind of show you guys and take you along on that journey. And obviously, picking everything's up along the way. Oh, shit. Hadouken!